Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Throughout human history, people have made it a practice to gather at the place where they have buried their dead. This happened back in ancient Rome in the catacombs where they would go regularly visit and have meals in the catacombs. It had maybe a resurgence in the early 20th century with cars where where people could drive out to these beautiful park-like cemeteries and whole families would go on a Sunday afternoon and have picnics in the cemetery. We don't do that so much anymore. If you went to a cemetery today, as I frequently do, you would go and the cemetery would be largely empty. And sometimes you go to cemeteries and they're completely overgrown, unkempt, not taken care of, as if they're totally forgotten. All Souls Day gives Christians the chance to re-enter that practice of remembering the departed. When people used to visit the cemeteries, they would do so in prayer. Sometimes, they, like the Middle Ages, they would be praying that their loved one who had departed and was closer to God might be helped along in their journey to heaven. More recently, we have the wonderful reimagining of the movie Coco, in which the memory and the prayer of those who remain actually gives life to those who have died. Whatever's really happening in that mysterious prayer moment on all souls, what we do know is that when we lose that practice, we lose something greater than well-kept graveyards. We lose a deep connection between those who remain and those who we love who have died. You see, this connection, this practice, is about more than us simply offering prayers for those who have died. It's a practice of a deep wholeness. Both our lessons proclaim today that though from the outside it looks like death is the end, like death is a disaster, in reality God is at work transforming and enlivening in the midst of that death. And so there's this ancient practice of the living meeting with the dead, remembering them, praying for them. And this practice can lead to wholeness. So let me invite you to this kind of all souls practice is take some time to meet with those who have departed, whom you love, and to meet not just with sadness or some sentimental sense of loss, those are important things, but with your whole self. When you go and practice, when you go visit them, visit and visit with joy, and gratitude, and remember the times of peace and the times of comfort. And also, when you go, remember some of the anger and some of the brokenness and some of the disappointment. Come with your whole self. Because it is in that whole encounter, in your whole presence, that the healing power of God can be at work. When we neglect to enter, enter this time with the departed, in some ways, we're neglecting a part of ourselves. Memories long forgotten, things pushed away, become overgrown like those tombstones in that overgrown cemetery 
that you can sometimes see. But coming fully, being truly present, the departed and those who remain allows God to retill that garden. And patches which you wouldn't have wanted to look at before, perhaps God can transform them and help them grow and bloom and be healthy. Perhaps by spending some time with the departed, with our whole selves, will allow God to once again create a beautiful garden, slowly but surely, in which the love that we have between us can grow. Amen.